So I guess the, the real question is whether it's possible to have a consensus on common theoretical and therapeutic assumptions that are uniquely relational. I'm, I'm not sure. I think despite the, the wide variation and, and overlap in our training, uh, the question really remains, um, you know, what's exclusively relational? The specific intent of um, my new book is twofold. Um, I, I want to, you know, provide a historical record in one volume of uh, all the debates that had taken place for nearly two decades on my critique of the relational movement, including all uh, the responses from my critics. And I also want to extend uh, an olive branch to relational practitioners in the hopes that uh, further dialogue may not only lead to conciliation, but, but more optimistically that relational theory may be inspired to improve upon its theoretical edifice, both conceptually and, and clinically. I mean, since I started my critique, um, to its credit, relational psychoanalysis has blossomed from being um, a homegrown United States East Coast club uh, to this international phenomenon with, you know, chapters on practically every continent. I, you know, one can't deny the, the appeal and the impact this movement has had on practitioners worldwide and in a, a multitude of um, cultures and languages. The sheer number of professionals that are attracted to this school of thought empirically speaks for itself. Um, you know, in short, it's the hottest thing since sliced bread. Uh, so, you know, we should ask why. Um, you know, although I address this in a number of ways throughout my book, uh, in retrospect, uh, you know, the mass appeal is obvious. Um, we all want and value relationships. It's not uh, unsurprising that many mental health professionals from diverse educational backgrounds would gravitate uh, toward this perspective. And without having to observe orthodoxy uh, or be formally ordained a psychoanalyst, uh, you know, this level of um, inclusivity is historically unparalleled in psychoanalytic studies. Well, people um, may not be aware of the extent to these debates, uh, in, nor their divisiveness or acrimony, um, you know, simply because, you know, we run in different circles or, you know, the literature is so diverse and sprawling. Um, but because uh, of these public exchanges that took place in writing and at professional conferences, I, I think these debates have historical significance in the development of the psychoanalytic movement as a whole, uh, you know, simply uh, due to their contentiousness and and proclivity to, to question cherished assumptions, both uh, old and new. Um, and not unlike, um, you know, the early political skirmishes that led to these splits uh, over time, uh, you know, like the historic controversial discussions with Melanie Klein and Anna Freud debates. Um, it's not uh, necessarily a bad thing to challenge new paradigms uh, that boast better approaches to theory and practice. Uh, let's just face it honestly. You know, after, after all, I mean, any discipline can only advance through critique and um, creative, you know, refinement. Um, I'm not interested in critiquing the relational school any longer. Uh, and I offer this volume as a way of putting matters to rest. But more importantly, it's my, my hope that a continuation of critique and dialogue um, may, may lead to improvements in relation. It, it all started when um, I published uh, the controversial paper, uh, Critique of Relational Psychoanalysis, which was published in the Division 39 
journal Psychoanalytic Psychology. Now, little did I know uh, what landmine I was stepping into, you know, not to mention, um, you know, the politics behind the scenes. You know, frankly, I, I was surprised how this uh, essay immediately launched a shitstorm. Um, later, I realized that, you know, going after sacred cows was not uh, particularly appreciated by many political camps within the division who identified uh, themselves as relational. Um, you know, I was an unwelcome trespass. Um, critique was uh, off limits. Uh, you know, now I'm told that, um, you know, it's taught in psychoanalytic training environments throughout the world. Um, uh, you know, another related controversy actually happened during the production of this book. Uh, you know, when it was decided by the press, uh, that uh, certain portions of the original critique article and uh, my, my reply to my critics needed to be modified uh, with uh, large portions cut uh, due to potential legal liability concerns that were coming from their in-house lawyers. Uh, despite the fact that the original papers had already undergone a, a blind peer review process and they were previously published uh, in a leading APA journal. I mean, can you imagine? Uh, this is the world that uh, we live in now. Everyone's paranoid uh, about getting sued. Um, I suppose this is why, uh, you know, Shakespeare said uh, the first thing we do is uh, we should kill all the lawyers. Well, what is um, interesting for me to notice is, is um, uh, in my previous critiques, I, you know, I've been more critical of the relational community's lack of its own theory versus clinical attitudes and approaches to treatment. I have, in fact, um, praised uh, the liberation of relational practice to classical technique. Um, but I do reflect on the future revisioning of relational praxis and what it may potentially achieve, especially if attention is paid to refashioning its core principles and its values um, uh, and, you know, and further development as a, as a new school of thought. Um, I don't think traditional psychoanalysis has a prayer's chance in hell of surviving in the future in North America. It simply boils down to money and time uh, neither of which uh, are, are affordable to, uh, to most people. Uh, the multiple weekly attendance for analysis is really now confined to those who are you know, going through training to become analysts. Um, you know, most people are not interested, uh, nor do they have the wealth or the leisure to do this. Um, psychoanalysis these days is uh, typically weekly face-to-face -face psychotherapy, but with someone who has appropriate clinical training, uh, sensibility, and, and skill. I think that one of the main um, goals for the relational turn uh, is the need to develop more of a cohesive theoretical framework and, and guidelines to praxis that, uh, that take into account how relationality is differentiated from other psychoanalytic and psychotherapeutic models. You know, in other words, you know, what does relational psychoanalysis offer that other schools of psychoanalysis don't? Um, currently, it lacks formalization. Uh, it's, it's made its claim to, f to fame more about practice than theoretical explanation or offering um, a, f a philosophy of mind or culture. In fact, relational theory is built uh, on negation and anti-Freudianism, which I don't believe is fair. It, you know, it wants to replace drive theory, but it offers, um, you know, little novelty that's not already been done by earlier movements. Because of this, um, you know, it suffers an image problem to psychoanalysis worldwide. Who'd, have already adopted, you know, relational principles in theory and practice. The exaggerations uh, as well and the distorted position statements and 
and these manufactured misinterpretations that are attributed to classical theory, uh, you know, hardly demonstrate scholarship. To me. Well, let's let's first of all ask, um, you know, how could relational theory become more original? That sets it apart from its earlier founders. Of course, this is a question that um, you know I really can't answer, but. You know, some attempt to establish a uniformity of theory may help. Um, even among, you know, the sea of diversity and difference and plurality that exists out there. Um, we might uh, want to ask, um, what is the, the essence of relationality? You know, what unites uh, like-minded practitioners? Uh, what does relational thought and, and praxis uh, stand for that can be generalized? If no uniformity of theory is possible, then, um, you know, even when attempting to account for diversity and integration, then, you know, one might, you know, want to consider a radical rejection of uniform uniformality. Um, you know, this is the postmodern position which, um, you know, I argue in the book is, uh, has many endemic problems, but offering a groundwork for a postmodern psychoanalysis would be an attempt, at the very least, uh, to organize a coherent framework of thought. The uh, future of relational psychoanalysis, um, in my mind, would profit from debates and, and more nuanced critiques particularly of analyst self-disclosure and self-revelation. Um, by examining the conditions of the therapeutic encounter, uh, clinical phenomena itself, but particularly the demarcations to um, therapist self-disclosure will help us consider you know, best practice approaches. And um, they have to be grounded in a, you know, a solid rationale that informs informs us when disclosure or revelation is warranted um, or when it's ambiguous or or excessive or prohibited you know the same caveat could be you know said for when and when not to make an interpretation um, but you know these issues also revolve around professional ethics and and jurisdictional le legislation based upon where one practices for instance, where I live uh, in, in Ontario, if I tell a patient um, that I find her sexually attractive, like some relationalists do, uh, I could be arrested. Uh, you know, the point is, though, um, there has to be some attempt at systemization and, and critique in, in order to advance a discourse on clinical practice. You know, these are the types of controversial discussions that uh, the relational community should welcome and, and, and tussle with, um, you know, from critics to adherents alike, you know, at, because they're relevant to all psychoanalytic schools. Well, I hope that uh, these debates don't take a back seat in psychoanalytic history, um, let alone become displaced or, you know, suppressed by the relational school. Um, you know, I, I get it that no one likes to be critiqued, but, uh, you know, there, there are many contemporary analysts who, you know, I admire for their courageous writings, um, their honesty, integrity, leadership, and, um, you know, vision for the future of the profession. Um, and, and the relational school uh, anticipates and adapts well to the current social realities that we face. Um, it's uh, my hope, though, that the relational movement will improve upon its uh, theoretical and clinical and applied edifice and, uh, and embraces critique because, um, you know, there really can't be progress um, without ongoing self-examination and, and re-evaluation.